My name is Christina Carell and I am statewide cover crop and soil health educator for Michigan State University Extension. I cover all commodities in state. I'm going to do what we call the slump test. The slump test will actually measure uh, aggregate stability. It'll help people see how their soil structure holds up under water and the resiliency that your soil has in cases of adverse weather effects. It will also show how well the soil will not only hold water, but it'll show how well the soil will give water off to plants, or if it's going to run through or run off or infiltrate, you're going to see that too. So it's, so it's a basic, it's a basic um, sample uh, procedure. You need a strainer, a sink strainer. Um, you need a mason jar of water. I, you, use, you can use any type of paper towel or a garbage bag, and you need a clot of soil. You want to make sure that the clot will actually fit in your strainer. So the first thing you want to do is, is what I usually do is I talk to the growers about what they do for their management practices, look at the size of their clot, um, smell it, look at, just kind of give a good idea of, of what you think is going to happen. And you take your clot and you just gently put it in your water and then you watch it. This is similar to a slate test, only this one is actually much more dramatic. And you can see what is going to actually break up and fall down. This is, this is the stuff that readily is going to break down in the soil. There's not a lot of soil structure in this part of your soil clod. Um, and that's, that's what we're looking at. And if you can see, you're going to see that the water will slowly wick up your clod as, as the pore spaces fill up with water. And if you have a sandier soil, um, I'm from Michigan on the west side of it, and we have sand. This is, this is actually a soil sample that was taken here on South Farms. So it, it is a nice loam. So loam soils will actually absorb the water really nice. Where a sandy sample, if you put a sandy sample in here, a lot of times it'll just break up, automatic. And then you're going to see in a couple minutes what will happen if it doesn't break up, but it will still lose its soil structure. So you want your soil sample to be dry when you do this. So this is just kind of the stuff on the side that doesn't have good root strength, that doesn't have a lot of those glues that we get from our, our roots to hold it together. So this is just the stuff that's breaking down. As you can see though, it's starting to lighten up. Uh, we have some settling, so our sediment is settling out. And then what you want to do, now take it out, get a little of the water off, and this is really dramatic. This is what people like to see. All you want to do is you want to quickly flip it out. If you have good soil structure, you're going to keep the shape that the soil uh, was in when you put it in here on your clod. If you have really poor soil structure, it'll actually just splatter out. And you'll, you'll lose all your soil structure. There's no aggregation left in it. Now for farmers, a lot of times I will have three or four of these set up so they can compare different management practices to see what, what they like to see. Um, we would use we would use a conventional tillage, we would use a no-till, um, or whatever they're doing in their field. And then we can compare it with different management practices. The soil structure, um, for soil health purposes, the better soil structure you have when it's wet, the more organic matter it usually means you have in the soil. It'll hold together, you'll have more nutrients in the soil, so that when we get these floods, it won't wash away. It'll stay there. Aggregate stability for soil, the, the more aggregate stability you have, the more stable the so your soil is, the more resilient your soil is. Um, it, won't, it won't be as critical at, during inclemental weather, um, as a climate change and our variability in our climate change. We're seeing that if you have good aggregate stability, good soil resiliencies, we're actually seeing more productive fields. And, and one of the things you could also do is when you're done, you can have people you know, pick it up and, and touch it. This has really good structure. I can still, it's, it's, it is full of water, but yet I can still mold it. If I had really poor structure, I wouldn't, be, it would just, I wouldn't be able to do this. It would just run right through my hands. And this is, this is very similar to the slate test. It's just a, really dramatic, especially if you've got a sandy soil when you flip it out and it splatters all over. That's a really good teaching tool. So the slum test is very similar to the slate test, and what we're trying to prove is it, still looking at aggregate stability. It's, it's cheaper to do, and it's very dramatic. It really, it, it really opens your eyes up to how your soil is going to hold together.
and you can touch it and feel it.